Hello, viewers. I'm SB. And I'm Amabel. And welcome back to Disco Elysium, where today we have so much to do. We have so much to do, and it's already 1325. Okay, well, the thing I want to do... Yeah. ...is I want to talk to the other other lorry driver, the one that the... The guy I want the other guy I wanted to punch um said was hang around the south. Mm hmm Um and I don't know if it's gonna be south if there's anywhere south of this intersection or if it's gonna be more or if I should go more west and then south. I'm not I'm still kind of feeling okay. my way around. Okay, well you're going north sort of northish right now. Oh yeah, because there's there's a thing in the way. I can't walk through. I can't parkour over the. I would love to see this guy try to do parkour. I bet he could. I bet it's fantastic. What else is that physical instrument for? Not punching that guy, because that didn't work out. Okay, this is just kind of a dead end. Yes, you know. I am you double... were here very recently. Hey, I am... What is this? Ruins full of snow. No one lives here anymore. Alright, then I am going to go to the west and then south. Because the east seemed pretty closed up. Closed off too. It's a lot of walking here. <laughs> a lot of walking in this game. Um, so something I mentioned before when we've been dealing with dialogue options is feeling like like I don't like either option I'm given, and I wish I could. Oh, well, I'm gonna look at this car. Before you stands a motor carriage. The bodywork is covered in blue and white livery, bearing the number 57. This must be the infernal machine that tore you from oblivion. Okay, so uh, I mentioned that that the, uh, you know, I'll get two dialogue options and I'm not super thrilled with either of them, but I actually like that a lot. I, I like that, you know, I'm in the moment. Even though this is a turn-based sort of game and it's giving me time to think about my responses, in actuality, what's being simulated is, you know, someone having a conversation. In a conversation, you're not going to come up with your best answer or the right question to ask. And because of how much this game is focused on, like, interiority and on like how this guy's brain works. I like the way in which the various aspects of his personality shape what answers you can give and limit your options in that way. I think that's really smart is what I just wanted to say. I feel like I was grousing quite a bit about it in the last episode. And I just wanted to mention that I actually really admire that. I, I'm feeling that pain in the moment and that that's a fun time. An ancient fountain. It doesn't pump water anymore. There's a tree in it. Yeah, that, that would do it. Alright, what do we got? This is just... Someone's... Roy's Pawn Shop. Fast, ca fast cash for faster times. Well, hang on. I need to check this out. Yeah, that's important police stuff, obviously. <laughs> Think about pawn shops. Some kind of machine. An antique cash register? Is it. There always are places where there is crime. In the dark, a film projector is whirring away. Oh, it sure is. That's. A bust of a woman. The plaque simply says, Day. Mostly military wear, with a few more eccentric fashions thrown in. 
Typical Martinez streetlight sits among assorted floor and table lamps. I will let my gaze run over the streetlight, sure. The light pole has been carefully cut and the wiring has been redone and attached to a standard indoor plug. The light buzzes faintly, but persistently. This would make quite a statement in your living room. There's nothing else I need to know about the light. <laughs> Actually, this is not important. It's not often that I see officers from the RCM in my pawn shop. The man at the counter turns to you slowly. What can I do for you? His courtesy is not insincere, but he prefers being alone with his projector, just watching the movement of light across the walls of the shop. Mm-hmm. Now that the RCM is here, tell me, have you had any trouble lately? I haven't had any problems myself, though some of my customers have complained about inconsistent law enforcement. <laughs> Who are your customers, usually? All kinds of people come through here. Locals, travelers, people looking for a deal, people looking for a keepsake, people who are terminally bored. As you can see, I have a wide selection of goods for everyone to choose from. Hmm. You know, I'm... I, this is an interesting answer. I think some reflections are more tasteful than others. And I feel that it leans into the kind of aspirational conceptualization thing, so... It keeps me... Entertained. He responds, unimpressed with your snobbery. Oh, I'm gonna take like mental health damage for that from that, I think. Entertained? He might be high. If he is, on what? Your electrochemistry's pretty good. <laughs> he is Roy High. And if yes, then what is he on? Feeling warm and enthralled by the movement of light. While the mind continues to race forward, lucky bastard, he's probably on Pyrolidon. It's tough to come by on the street. Pyrolidon? What is that? A drug developed by the military to treat and prevent radiation sickness. It has psychedelic side effects, and it makes your eyes turn yellow. He is wearing those big conspicuous shades inside. Do I want to check or do I want to go straight to the point? This is a good... You know, it, I'm, I'm trying to be more disarming. So where does the man get Pyrolidon these days? How would I know? You are a cop, remember? <laughs> Those triangle patches on his vest, you have a feeling they mean something. Like they're similar to the halogen rectangle on your jacket. No judgment, just curious. I probably did lows at Pralodon before I lost my memory. I've had to take it. You know, since the people's pile cleanup. I was with the emergency relief brigade. He's taken for mental and emotional, not physical pain these days. It must have been tough, radioactive cleanup. There's a reason why everyone's tried to forget any of it ever happened, and why no one has tried to repair or replace the pile. So much disappointment, an early death, cancer mostly. And we knew all that was coming even as we were cleaning up as best we could. This game is really bleak, sweetheart. Whose fault was it that the generator failed? No one's. Everyone's. See, even even among interactions with one person, their voice lines are sometimes like wildly different uh, audio levels. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't have any insight into how they recorded the voice lines. 
I remember hearing about um, one of the Bethesda games where they just had the lines recorded in alphabetical order. Mm-hmm. And that's... Yeah, or- organization that's... of, <laughs> like, lines in video game scripts is done in spreadsheets more often than you would expect. The, yeah, I... So much bitterness. Because like all of your all of your like really audio recording experience is in the context of like making a film, right? Um, yeah, and it's pretty easy to keep the lines straight there because they're in scenes, and the scene like the scene is the unit of um, of, of data retention. But we, like when you think about a video game, because you have to hook everything up to all of these different like responses and have them play at different moments, every different line of dialogue is its own separate object sitting in a database. Yeah. And so you have to, you know, you have to hook them all separately. And that means they get potentially recorded at different times. And especially with this thing where like they did a bunch of audio recording for the original release. And then they came back and for everybody did at least a second session. And that second session occurred like months, two years after the first one. It's a nightmare. It seems like a total nightmare. Yeah, I, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. And I'm not uh, faulting. I mean, it, it's an organizational task that I've never had to face and never will uh, have have to face because yeah, I've only done like a linear film. Yeah. You know, um, there was one of one of the films I made. We actually did all the audio in post. Um, okay. Like. Uh, to uh it, it was like italian style and we even had like different voice actors do the voices than the physical actors to give it kind of like this kind of weird unreality mm-hmm. um and uh that was a pain in the ass and actually trying to get it to sync up was a pain in the ass and uh no one thought it was cool but me so i learned my lesson Anyway, so much bitterness. That's God. The the emotional resonance of this thing is. I keep saying this like a few times every episode, but like the writing is really damn good. It's yeah. It's okay to be impressed by a thing that's impressive. A bunch of poor people built themselves a primitive nuclear reactor, hoping for the best. What do you think is going to happen? Tell me more about this emergency relief brigade you were part of. We were an all-volunteer force, self-organized, tried to help the fire brigades contain the spill. And he, even his, even his, his little portrait is such a sadness to it. It's such like an exhausted, defeated quality. It's just, it's just remarkable. Tough son of a gun, this one. Respect. I lived by the river since I was a small boy. The Esperance didn't have the art to let it all go to shit without trying to do something to help out. There wasn't much the volunteer force could do, however. We wasted years in the river mud. Years getting sick. He looks at the spiraling light and stops. How did you end up running a pawn shop? The cleanup happened 15 years ago. I was young then. Later, my second aunt died. Left me this shack and all the assorted junk in it. What happened to his first aunt? Har har. What do you mean har har? Click the button. So I came to Martinez. People told me don't go there. It's a shithole. I said, people, we just had a nuclear pile meltdown. I'm going to get as far away from Forberg as I can. Still in the same city, but... Oh, like a second cousin. (laughs) I'm sorry, I'm dense. Thank you for telling me. I like the theory more than the story. Outward movement, not vortices. 
boy. Yeah, you got to get in on those vortices, my man. So the written line is, I like theory more than story. And the spoken line is, I like the theory more than the story. And those are two very fucking different lines. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to ask about the gun. It's a good thing for me to ask about. Do you breathe it? Someone else came here earlier today asking the same question. I promptly sold her the gun you pawned a couple days back. Don't okay, I'm sorry. Don't I'm describe sorry. By... the line. Deliver okay. the line. I'm sorry. By the way, do you um happen to have any guns like the ones carried by cops? I'm sorry. I I, I need to do that more consistently. I I know sometimes my reading is a little wooden, um, and I'm a little self conscious about it sometimes. Um, okay. So this this is important to know. What? Sold? And it also tremendously bad news. Just unbelievably bad news. The lieutenant shifts from one foot to another. Alert. Wait, I sold you my gun? You... Uh... You were adamant about getting rid of it, officer said you were undeserving of a service weapon of the River Shoals Citizens Militia. Okay, that's embarrassing. And I don't like keeping guns around the shop for long. Off the charts photon emissions. The unhealthy kind. Was the buyer a policeman too? I'm almost certain it wasn't, but... She didn't seem like a policeman. Although she kept referring to herself as a pig, which was odd. I found her interest in the gun a bit obsessive, but I was just happy to get rid of it and of her. Huh. Truth be told, she was terrifying. Right, so let me get this right. You sold your sidearm, issued by the citizen's militia, and now a civilian is running around the streets of Martinez with it? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I sold my gun. I, I, I just feel like the... I just, I, I'm not going to try to dis dissemble with Kim. <sighs> yeah, it's not good. I do hope we manage to clean this mess up somehow, while also keeping our focus on the murder investigation. Any idea where I can find this buyer? My apologies, officer, but I have no idea where she was coming from or where she went. Okay. A needle in a haystack. There is nothing you can do about it now. You just have to hope you luck upon her somehow. Yeah, that makes sense. Your luck has been awesome so far. <laughs> At least now I know how I lost my sidearm. Let's talk about something else. I actually really enjoy that this, as far as I can remember, this this is an RPG where there is not like a luck. Um, uh, stat, which, you know, I always find like to be one of the dumbest things in, in RPGs. So I, I, I like that actually. At least now I know how I lost my sidearm. Let's talk about something else. Of course. There's something I'd like to sell. Let me have a look. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I was trying to sell the cigarettes, but okay. I don't have anything to sell at the moment. Another time, perhaps. You might be able to aid our investigation. I doubt it, but I can try and answer any questions you may have. Know anything about the recent hanging? I do my best to keep my distance from all manner of butchery. Bad for business, bad for everyone. No one likes to see what you have to see every day. Ever had any dealings with Everett Clare? He's been by the shop a couple of times. Okay, nothing to follow up on there. 
Actually, that's all I've got. The pawnbroker's gaze is already fixed on the dancing colors. I have other business to take care of now. Okay, so let's get out of here. It was interesting, at least, if not necessarily yeah. helpful. I mean, I guess we learned no. about the gun. Yeah, I, I, every, everything is... What are you... I can reattempt a white check, I guess. Hmm. According to that list, the uh, the physical instrument check with Measurehead is open uh, right now. Yeah, but I would like to. So where am I? Am I? What are you? What are you um... gonna? So hold on. What are you gonna lose a coin flip twice in a row? Has that ever happened to anyone? Come on. It's gonna be a very short run if I lose two points of health again. How do I get health back? Uh, drugs have, probably. I have... Oh, I don't like that. Um. Yeah, my physical instrument is so so good. It should be much yeah. higher. You're you're very punchy. Uh, you could like probably punch a wall and like try to find a whole roasted chicken inside of it. Okay. Uh, I, I mean... bet that would be great for your health. <laughs> I have you ever eaten a wall chicken? I wouldn't recommend it. Why are you? Can you do you a mouse wheel? Can you mouse wheel out? What is the camera so zoomed in for? <laughs> I did not know the mouse wheel did that. Oh, hey, you get, oh. A helpline to the company that controls the drawbridge. Is the, you didn't think that thought was important? Oh, I didn't see the thought because I was looking at the guy. street vendor surrounded by a motley assemblage of goods. When he realizes you're looking at him, his face breaks into a wide, welcoming grin. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm trying to keep all the stuff on the screen uh, in my vision at once. Happy shopping, officer. Everything's cool here. What's so cool? Everything's cool. The goods are cool. The customers are cool. The place is cool. And one more thing, officer. From out on the bay, a cool wind gathers. It sweeps into the city, tugging at the textiles, hanging around the stand. Some distance away, the sound of a tin can clattering across the street can be heard. The shivers are always so evocative. I mean, everything's evocative in this game, but but the way the shivers are written is always very... Um... I don't know, it gives me some shivers. I don't, I don't know how to express it. You're... Very cool. He makes bang, both. Bang, bang, bang. Wow. <laughs> he makes both hands into finger pistols and fires a few finger bullets into the air, complete with narration. Whether I'm cool is unimportant. I have police questions for you. You're right, officer. 100%. No playing around then. Strictly business. Maybe I can interest you in some premium menswear instead. Ah. Uh, where are you from? Me? It's a boring story, officer. Who cares about the past? I'm all business now. All Revachon. Sounds good. It's got business then. Very cool. I like your style, officer. <laughs> Okay, so, so like, what's your stance on drugs? Drugs? I don't go in for that, officer. Drugs ruin lives. Unless you're into drugs, of course. In which case, drugs are excellent. Mwah. Tasty, tasty drugs. Well, what's your stance on drugs? <laughs> Don't leave him hanging. Uh, I'm super into the drugs. That's very cool. 
A lot of the coolest detectives do drugs. Sadly, I don't have any drugs on sale. Or at my home, or on my person. Ah, damn, he's one step ahead of you. We're looking for a lorry driver who's transporting drugs out of the harbor. He or she is in this traffic jam. That's even cooler. You investigating that and all. But uh, I am not a lorry driver. I'm just a street vendor. I don't know anything about that. But you are a lorry man. Another Trevor has identified you and your lorry. Who said that? It's the fat racist, right? I bet it's him. He has an agenda against me because I'm an immigrant who works harder than he does. He's a hater. He is a hater. This, is, we, this, this seems true. So you admit you're a lorry driver? No, I just said I work harder, and he's an asshole. I'm... He stops to think. Okay, maybe I'm a lorry driver too. A little. But that's not the most important thing about me. That's my day job. This is my dream. So you were embarrassed to tell me? No, I just forgot. It's mm. such a small part of my life. It's in the rear view mirror now. I'm climbing out of that hole with ingenuity. Uh, should I just accuse him or should I? I think I'll go with the first one. Stop squirming. What do you know about the drug operation at the harbor? Nothing. I told you. I'm not a dumb guy. I don't get involved with that crowd. And what crowd is that? Oh, good job, Kim. Crowd, you know, the drug crowd. <laughs> There's more here. He's afraid of this crowd, whoever they are, more than he is of the racist lorry man. I mean, the amount of fear you ought to have about that guy does seem like it should be a pretty low bar to pra uh, pass. Yeah. Who are you afraid of? Look, there's bad people doing bad things here. That's all I know. Please don't get me into this mess. I've spent 15 years working my way up. Oof. I'm, I'm going to... I... Mm, which... So which of the let's talk let's talk through these two options. Okay. So this first option feels like it might be more likely to get results, you know, pushing, intimidating, but also is me yelling, like raising my voice at someone? Is my character my character raising his voice at someone? And yeah. I I did. I don't know. Like, there aren't there aren't people around though to hear it. You know, um, the other one is still trying to, you know, glad hand and and uh, socially convince him to help out. Um, do, do, do either of these feel? So I mean. Do either of these feel more likely to work with your read on, on this character that we're interacting with? What Define work. As far as if he has information, get it from him. You know, how you're a much better judge of character and people <laughs> than I am. Yeah, but also I know a bunch of stuff. There's a reason I'm not driving here. Okay. Yeah, no, you're right. I'm sorry. I can, um, I can only give you... Like un unbiased, un unevidenced advice in some places, in some ways. Okay, I'm I'm gonna try the buddy's tack because that's that's more. I I've already tried to punch someone today and it didn't feel great, and so I, I don't want to use violence or intimidation or or authoritarianness. Or buddy, Selang, help us out. No one will know it was you. It's a she, okay. The other drivers call her the lady driver. You're better off staying away from her. The way they talk about her, she's no lady. Is the lady driver the old woman back there? 
dazed out, strange. Uh, I, I'm pointing to the pale driver. I don't know. Maybe if she is, I haven't gone near her. I don't get involved. I told you. It could be. She was strange. Who are these other drivers who talk? All of them. I don't know. I told you all I know. Are we cool now? I really want us to be cool now. Who exactly is talking about this lady driver of yours? The racist or the other one with the tattoos? All of them. Even the ones who've left. I don't hang out with them. I don't remember who has tattoos. Okay, we're cool now. All right. I scored. Let's cap this off with a purchase. You can walk away from here with funky sunglasses, detective. Both of you. You deserve it. <laughs> I do have a plus one on this check. Uh, I'll look around, thanks. There are clothes inside. Cheap second-hand clothes. Smelling of strangers' body odors. Don't be shy. These are premium class clothes. Good quality fabrics. Best retro design. Save the economy with your style, officer. I'll browse through the box. You find your hands deep in tattered and faded garments made from weird polyester blends that make your body itch and sweat in all the wrong places. Economical, but also trendy. Look first hand. Buy second hand. Keep the economy moving. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll try this check. I like that it's a composure Something check. Something cold grazes your hand. Synthetic and sleek. A windbreaker. Surf, it says, but also wind. Summer, 100% waterproof. And sport. All in different typefaces. That's amazing. I, I do love that. This jacket is the apex of human evolution. The moment at which man became weatherproof. <laughs> Practical, and yet it may deaden your senses to the world around you. Possibly because of the awful typeface. Good choice, officer. Mega sporty. And it's only 450 for you, sir. I don't have that much money. <laughs> What we got over here? You see two lowly, defeated speakers, thralls, slaves basically, perched atop them like conquerors surveying the land. A pair of found, durable wear sneakers, ultra serious. I can see you were tasteful luxury officer. Can't keep your eyes off those sneakers? <laughs> this is cute. Uh, I will inspect the sneakers. A pair of found ultras. The design is impossibly sleek and simple. A futuristic silhouette with a sleek monochrome colorway, a jet black upper, and a silver lined midsole. Wow, I did, I did a jet upper and a mid. That's amazing. Those sneakers, mister. Those sneakers are the latest found sneakers. Super air, super fine, super cool. Only 50 real. I don't. Only? That's madness. I, I, uh... I mean, they're pretty okay. good sneakers. They, they do, kind of, in a way, they make you dumber just by wearing them, but they are very slick. Okay, what's over here? There's a pile of cheap sunglasses in a small box. A variety of shapes and colors. You like sunglasses, officer? I've got the latest styles right here. The vendor takes a pair of sunglasses and sticks them under your nose. Okay, I'll try them on. Abort. These are hideous. What's more, they don't even fit your face. <laughs> you can feel them pinching your nose and chafing against your brow. Damn, officer! 
You look like a mega secret spy. Very secret. They're practically made for you. I'll let you have them for two real and fifty cents. They're perfect for concealing your bloodshot and baggy eyes. No, you are definitely not buying those. <laughs> the lieutenant gently removes the glasses from your face. <laughs> You're right. I'm too sensible for those. Are you sure? But they look so good on you. You should think this through, officer. I will rummage through the box. These are all boring. Boring third-rate ho-hum sunglasses made of cheap Sirais plastic. The kind of plastic that melts in the sun. These are all first-rate sunglasses. Premium design, super material, very cool. UV resistant. These will definitely keep your eyes safe and cool while doing your dangerous police work. So see, like, it's a conceptualization check to find something cool in this box. The other check, the other box was more of an endurance problem. Yeah, that's, I, I like that. That's really, that's really interesting. Uh, yeah, I'll try this, Jack. No luck. All you find is this lime-colored cellophane visor produced by a bargain sportswear brand called Amphibian, apparently. There's a malformed green frog on its bent cap. Oh, that visor is perfect for you, officer. It'll definitely keep the sun out of your eyes while you're shooting criminals. Bang, bang. And all for a mere six real. Kim, are firefights something we should be prepared for? I hope not. He says, looking up from his browsing. You don't like it? Sure, Square Joe. No problem. Let's get you some real shades. I mean, you do. <laughs> Hold on just a goddamn second. Look at those. Stop Stop taking the mouse. Look at the damn sports visor. Amabel, how dare you? Take that in. <laughs> okay, okay. I was looking at the pertinent information, what, what it does I was No, I was looking at the pertinent information. <laughs> and it was looking right back at me. Okay, I'm going to leave for now. Six real, it's a steal. Okay. Um, so I'm going to talk to the old woman again. Imagine. Imagine how much more likely she would be to give up information if she knew she was being watched twice over. Well, I guess Kim is there. But the third time, if she was being watched for a third time over. Policeman walks around wearing that hat. You know he has nothing to fear. Actually, you know what? Hang on. Let me talk to this guy first, because he also got accused. And... Well, to be fair... He, he's on the way. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Make way for the master poet. Ah. <sighs> okay. I heard that one of the drivers is a woman, but I don't think she's here. Do you know about this lady driver? I don't want to talk about that. It's his least favorite Edgar Wright movie. <laughs> I don't mean to pry, but I need your help. She may be involved with the drug business. Man, I was hoping it isn't going to be her. All I can say is she isn't around here anymore. She isn't some evil drug trafficker. And I don't know where she is. Well, see, this has gotten much more interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, I asked you who's conducting the drug trade. You said you didn't know. Now you're saying you do. I didn't, man. I told you I was hoping it's not her. That she wouldn't be mixed up in it. Who is this person? What's her name? Thank God I don't know. People here call her the Lady Driver. She kept her name a secret. From me, too. Now I see why. Who is she to you? A friend? An acquaintance? I don't know. She was the only person in this damn jam I could talk to. She's someone I don't want to write out to the law, okay? What does she look like? A youngish woman. 
gruff, but in a cool way. Like the crime dog. What could our hair? Blue and violet. Died. It was violet when she got here. Blue before she went. Then she may have died it again. <laughs> Thank you, Logic. When did she leave? Damn, I don't want to... Please just let it go. Whatever she did, it can't be that bad. She's not a bad person. I know that much. We can't just let it go. It's part of a police investigation. That's how it always is with you, isn't it? All part of the investigation. The girl's troubled. If you hunt her down, she may not survive it. I can't have that on my conscience. It won't come to that. We won't pursue her on this. This is information only. I don't believe you. You said she's troubled. How? She's got the darkness in her. That young person's darkness when you think it's all over. And you're looking for a way out. Oof. She shared this with you? Yes. Which is why I don't want to snitch on her. I was told everyone's afraid of her. You're not? I heard the rumors. I saw the other drivers looking at me strange when we talked. And she told me, too. That she's had a violent life. But I wasn't afraid of her. More like for her. Did this violent life include drug trafficking? Well... It looks like it did now, but we didn't talk about that. We talked about life, you know? She talked about her mind. Hold on, her mind? The way it worked. The trouble it was giving her. The pain it was causing her. When she left, did she leave her lorry behind? Fuck, man. Go grill someone else with these questions, okay? There are plenty of drivers here who couldn't stand her, or were afraid of her. They'd be more than happy to rat her out. Push Tommy and it will break his heart and his spirit. Don't expect you to be pals. Now is not the time to focus on feelings. You need that info, son. It's right here. The answer is right here. You just need to ask him. Come on, do it. <sighs> Oh, this is, I appreciate that these checks have, you know, have given me a clear picture of consequences. Mm -hmm. I don't like the consequences though. Um, you know, I, I'll say I'll drop the matter for now and I can always come back to it if I need to, but I probably can't get information from other people. Thank you, friend. Wow, this makes me feel like I should pick up smoking again. Would help with my rhymes, too. That's... That's... I want an option I tell him not to, not to smoke. <laughs> that's all for now. Bye. I don't know if that's, like, advice that people take very seriously coming from a stranger, especially a stranger who's an authority figure. Okay, that's fair, but... Okay, let me... Why are we going around? Oh, my God. Okay. So let me ask this lady if she knows... A... No, she's over there. Okay. Ask her if she knows about the lady the driver. still hunched over the railing, her head swaying to the music. Her eyes looking at nothing in particular. All right, I'll snap my fingers in front of her face again. Huh? What is it? What do you want? All right, are you the lady driver? Did you just call me a lady, Harry Fair? She clearly doesn't think she's a lady. Don't repeat it. 
I was told of a woman driver. You're the only woman here. I'm not that hater, Harifa. I've gone too far from it all to remember what was between my legs. It doesn't work like that on the long haul. So you're not the driver everyone is terrified of? I'm only terrifying to small children and to those who used to know me. Why are you scared to the people who used to know you? Because they can no longer recognize the person I once was. You said long haul. That's dot dot dot. The big ones, the trucks. There's no women and men there. It's all just. In the middle of this town, there's a ghostly motorway. It takes all the people where they want to stay. You feel very cold suddenly. As if standing face to face with a terrifying adversary. Then the feeling dissipates and all you see is an aging woman. In the background, a quiet song seeps from her cabin into the air. You don't hear any vocals. I really like this. This is so... I, I, I like the kind of mystical quality it all has. Mm-hmm. Uh, then who is the female driver I was told of? How should I know? Do I look like I spend a lot of time with the other camioners sniffing around? When I have my movies to go to? That's all I needed to know, thanks. Oh, sin. The woman stares at you, her mind elsewhere now, on other matters. Thank you for now. All right, I'll go question the other driver. Um, oh, not this way. I'm sorry, I'll get the hand of the navigation eventually. Oh yeah, we have to go all the way around here and then up the thing. I suppose it does give give the whole thing uh, a sense of space that you wouldn't have if you were doing a bunch of fast traveling or whatnot. All right, I'm sure this will be enlightening. Looking for something? I know you've been giving me the runaround. Fess up. Where's the lady driver? I don't know what you're talking about. Then why are you smirking? Listen up, fuckwits. You don't scare me. You cops don't run Revachel West. You don't run Martinez. You don't run anything. <sighs> so who does? You? No, he means La Puta Madre. The name resounds like a bell in the air, a dark gong. You get a bad feeling about it. Looks like the lieutenant has a plan. Let him do this. <laughs> yeah, him. Cross your arms and nod. Then I presume you are familiar with his peonies. <laughs> Whoa, filthy. Yeah, they're his little bitches. He's got them all over the unions. Not just the unions. He has peonies everywhere. Some say he even has them in the RCM. Dirty fucking peonies who do anything for him. Multi-ethnic drug addicts. You're not peonies. You wouldn't be investigating a drug thing if you were. No, of course not. We are not peonies. But if we were, and one of Madre's drivers were to be stealing from him, then it's a good peonies job to find out who that is. I really like this. I really like letting Kim take the lead like this. And, and... Because first of all, I'm, I'm going to say it, I think Kim is a better detective than I am. Okay, fair. 
And also, just it's a really, it's a really interesting narrative choice, you know. And also, he I, knows I, things about the world and is yeah. capable of this. That, that's all. That's all quite helpful. And I, I like that. I'm playing. I am playing a role because in a lot of role playing games, I feel, and maybe this isn't as true for CRPGs where I don't have as much experience. But a lot of it is, you know, you perhaps inhabiting the role of an extraordinary person and you're you're the hero who is doing the things and i am just this pathetic fuck up and i like that i'm not capable i like that i'm i am made to feel so small within this world it's not a hard job it won't take a long time it won't make badly madly angry but a stupid fucking racist is standing in the way protecting this fucking thief. I'm not scared of you or the mob. I'm under the protection of the Loriman and Carter's guild. You've seen that corpse in the ceramic armor there. Did his shitty little guild protect him? <laughs> nah, you wouldn't just leave him out there if you... He tries to light a fresh cigarette, but his hands are shaking now. The sentence simply ends. The lieutenant turns and gives you a barely perceptible nod. I softened him up as best I could. Now it's on you to finish the job. Well, you got the skills for it, apparently. All right. Men like this only respect two things. Strength and fear. Time to turn up the volume. Well, I only have one option. Show me her, Lori, right? Fucking now. Yep, that's definitely oh. how that should be delivered. <laughs> I'm, I'm not used to saying the swears on your program. The lady driver's Lori. Where is it? What on earth? You saw the you saw the capital letters and you were like, "Aha! The way Steve Martin would deliver a punchline." The lady driver's lorry. Well, excuse me. I swear, what I was trying to do, I saw the question mark and the exclamation point at the same time, and I thought <laughs> you just like completely panicked. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm so bad at this. I love you, sweetie. <sighs> Show me her lorry, right? Flip it now. The lady driver's lorry, where is it? Is, is that better? Did I do better? I think you should press the button. Fuck oh. you. I told you. I'm not gonna. Oh, look at that. You're getting right up on his jowls. There. His voice grows smaller as yours. He did he did make a homophobic assertion before. To be fair, I feel like he's kind of earned this. Yeah, I'm going to go with the first one. Now, this is not usually how I would say this line to someone. <laughs> you know, obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's like, I'm going to fuck you for the rest of my life. You understand? Fucking homo cup. A globule of sweat gathers at his brow. Look, fuck you, man. It's some lorry down there. Green banged up thing. I don't fucking know who she is. When did she go away? I don't know. I don't even know her name. She just rolls with the fleet and acts like a big shot. Some dyke, probably. I haven't even seen her for days. Is this, did his accent completely change? Yeah. Also, I find it really interesting. <laughs> you, you scared the accent out of him. <laughs> I find it really interesting that, um, you know, with the F slur, uh -huh. they've been bleeping it out. Yeah. Uh, both visually and in an and auditory in way. Audio, yeah. Um, 
but with the word dyke, which maybe isn't as much, I mean, it's more of a reclaimed slur, I guess, than the F slur is. I mean, I feel like the F slur is, is quite reclaimed. Yeah. It just, it just, it's interesting to me the difference, the, the, yeah. why they felt the need to do one and not the other. Like, I'm, as someone who identifies as a dyke, I certainly don't have a problem with seeing and hearing it, but it's just uh, a, a weird. No, you're right. It's interesting. Right. Um, where exactly is her lorry? Past the monument down there. The Green Temple. Now leave me the fuck alone, okay? A small temple by the monument. Green. Let's get into that lorry. Right, I'm going. Well, there you go. Alright, let's... Let's get over there and down there. Well, we know how much you love to walk past that monument. Yup. Okay, if I do this... Because if I just click somewhere, it will pathfind to it. Yeah. I don't need to be so precious about it trying to do a little bit at a time. I don't know where I picked that up from. Probably some other game I played at some point. Okay, green... Is this is this green? That is green. Okay, it, it, it this it's green more an olive. A to Z contemporary is parked in the shadow of the ruins looming overhead. It's seen better days. Olive is a shade of green. This must be the one he told us about, unless he was lying. Try to peek in the window. The glass on the side windows is tinted and covered with dust. You can barely make out the shape of a seat and two steering levers. Try the door handle. The door is locked. The handle looks shiny, like it's recently replaced. How are we going to get this open, Kim? Let's get the pry bar from my kinema and smash in the window. I don't good know idea. how good it is, but this investigation has taken long enough. We can't afford it to take any longer. All right, so we're... That doesn't seem like a thing you're just allowed to do, but I guess that's pretty rich considering that if I had known the pry bar was there earlier, I would have told you to go get it so we could beat Measurehead to death with it. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, I'm fine with violence against humans, but I balk at violence against property. I've become a lib. Inside, you see a set of steel levers. <laughs> A radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Uh, maybe it's in the toolbox? A metallic drawer slides out from under the seat and clicks into place. The tools inside are neatly organized. Take what you need, officer. It's going to be a long case. I'm not protective of my tools, like some men are. He's clearly a little protective of his tools. But what can you do? Work is work. Uh, I'm going to take the red tip pry bar. The pry bar feels nice and cold in your hand. Heavier than you'd think. Cold and heavy. Like truth. You feel like you're reunited with truth once more. Useful for opening all sorts of doors and lids. I'll push in the pull-out toolbox. The pull-out toolbox slides back into its nest. Preheater gauge casts a warm glow on the steering levers and the radio on its hook. Close the door. All right, and now let's uh, get over back to the thing with the crowbar. So what is this, the 12th, 13th time this episode you've walked past that, uh... The monument? Yeah, I think so. This green found, A to Z, 
Contempora is parked in the shadow of the ruins looming overhead. It's seen in better days. You don't have the pry bar. I need it. Okay. No, I went with my left hand. There we go. Okay. I don't know if my character is left-handed or right-handed, but... Sounds like you just picked. I'm left-handed, so that's what I picked. This screen found A to Z, Contempora, is parked in the shadow of the ruins looming overhead. It's seen better days. You probably don't right. need to wait for him to read a thing he's read a bunch of times already. With a firm grip, you raise the pry bar. A glint of light catching on the tip. <laughs> Call down the hammer of truth and justice. Release your secrets, Laurie Gavin. I mean, you know what you must do. <laughs> I'll say fuck the police and then smash it. I'm sorry, he's pretty funny too, but... Smash it apologetically is fun to imagine. The window shatters, and droplets of glass fly everywhere, shattering over the lorry floor and pavement. Sato. <laughs> Says the lieutenant, and sticks his hand in the window like a common car thief, and then opens it. The smell of cigarettes and perfume welcomes you. The cabin inside is plastered with old movie posters. Actresses smile from the walls. There's a radio transmitter in the front, and a toolbox tucked under the driver's seat. Some tools lie scattered near the pedals. I'm going to admire the posters. Find some movie posters. These are movie posters featuring starlets from long forgotten films from the 20s, the teens, even the 90s of the last century. One of them particularly catches your eye a centerfold of an ingenue attached right above the back seat. Uh, that seems kind of skeezy. Enough of the posters. The actresses and the rear actor all smile you a warm goodbye. <laughs> a radio transmitter is attached to the dashboard and a toolbox sits under the driver's seat. I'll examine the radio. Looks like the frequency dial is absent. It requires a key to work, but the key has been removed. Likely by the missing lady driver. Strange. There are so many radio stations here, Dea. Must be over 100 at least. Why would anyone need so many radio stations? For contacting an entire fleet of lorrymen, for example. This is all shortwave, UW and UKV. Looks like we are dealing with an impressive organizational tool. The nerve center of a huge operation. With quite a range, too. Is there anything we can do with the radio? Uh, doesn't look like it. It's completely inoperable without the dial key. What else is here? The smell of a thousand cigarettes, some dead actresses, and a rusty old toolbox under the seat. I'll check the pedals before the toolbox. You wedge yourself under the steering wheel to get a better look. Seems like the few tools lying around here, a hammer, a pair of pliers, a rusty wrench, have been casually thrown there by the disorganized driver. But one odd detail does catch your eye. A piece of sandpaper has been glued to the throttle. Hmm. Huh. Sandpaper adds extra grip. Looks like the driver has glued a piece of sandpaper to the throttle to offer some extra grip. Sandpaper? A novel technique? Back up into the cabin again. The movie stars are still smiling from the walls. There's a radio transmitter in the front, and a pull-out toolbox tucked under the driver's seat. Some tools lie scattered near the pedals. I feel like the toolbox is the important thing, but I like going through... I like, I like clicking on the things even if I know I'm not going to get a whole lot out of it, because of just the, the, the description and the interactions that come from it. It's really... It's really neat. A metallic drawer slides out from the seat. It's empty, except for a folded newspaper. I will unfold the newspaper. It's an issue of Petty Ferdic from last Wednesday. A piece of paper falls out from its pages. Pick up the note. It looks like an article ripped out from a radio enthusiast magazine. <laughs> Complex mathematical equations explain the basics of something called the ULAN frequency system. 
These formulas look oddly painful. Maybe it's the hangover, but they give you a headache. Huh. The Ulen frequency system? I've never heard of that before. I know of FM, AM, UKV, but... I push in the toolbox. I pull out two bolts slide back into his nest. The rest is as it was. Radio, posters, a trace of motor oil smell under all the cigarettes. Okay, and close the door. I close the rusty old lorry door. Great. I think we got everything. A word, detective? Before we return to Joyce? Yeah. All right, we've finished here. Let's quickly debrief and go over what we found, so we don't do it in front of the company rep. Seems like something police would do. What do you think of all this, Kim? Honestly, I'm quite worried by what we've seen so far. The evidence seems to point to a rather extensive and well-organized operation. I'm especially intrigued by that radio transmitter, particularly the sheer number of stations it can connect. Looks like this alleged drug trade casts a wide net. I'm not sure what the Yulan frequencies are all about, but they may hold some significance. Perhaps it's a better way to connect between fleets while avoiding frequency bleed, or maybe it's used to tap into RCM networks. Listening in on your calls between you and your station, a worrying prospect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I will lean into being this... Is, is this character a himbo? Would, would, would you define our character as... I mean, I feel it, like it's up a, to you. This is a really dense... I mean, this is such a dense question, but I, I kind of love it. What about the movie posters? How do they factor into all this? As elegant as they are, I don't think they are relevant to the drug trade. I bet they're super relevant. We'll find out. Don't be fooled. Desire always plays a role. Yeah, no, I understand that. Okay. Maybe the trader is some sort of sin. Could the film industry be involved? That's okay. I love that too. I'm, I'm doing that last one. I'm going to say no. <laughs> Awfully quick to rule it out there, Kim. How do you think this is connected to the union? We didn't find anything conclusive linking them to the smuggling operation. But somehow, I doubt that Everard Clare would be oblivious to something like this happening right under his nose. My suggestion is, we use it against the Union in any way we can, to our own ends. It's a slippery ill, but we just might be able to pin them down, indirectly, down the road. Will the RCM open an investigation into this? We should return to the murder case. See what Joyce tells us about the lynching. When we are done for the day, I call my station and suggest our narcotics department look into it. There are more than enough grounds to start an official investigation sometime later when we are done here. We do not want to get caught in that. What are you thinking? The fact that one hasn't started already gives me pause. An investigation, I mean. Especially if the Madre grouping is involved and I can't imagine they aren't. It's certainly worrisome. Corruption? All the same, I don't like the idea of internal affairs descending on the matter. That won't help anyone either. Okay. Debrief over? Debrief over. After you. Alright, so it must have want to go punch that guy again. I think we'll we will head back to Joyce. Can I get some more information on the lynching? And possibly yeah. Oh, Okay. Well, maybe Tommy, talk to this guy first. Tommy probably saw the thing you just did. Yeah. Or maybe he heard you shout, fuck the police. Or maybe both. I uh, saw you poking around in Lady Driver's lorry. She in trouble? Um... Well, uh, no trouble. She's gonna be fine. I'm. I'm not gonna worry the guy. Oh man, that's like 
a load off my mind. All that stress was messing up my rhymes. <laughs> What's the plan with those rhymes anyway? Oh, you know. Tommy Leham's gonna be a musician. Sprech Gesang, but with beats. I've got a lot of free time on the road to hone my craft. Why Tommy Lahom? Tommy Lahom was taken. My real name's Jerry Lafitte. Tommy's way better. Mm. Actually, I had another question. All right, all right, I had another question, actually. The man taps his fingers rhythmically against his arm. Oh, okay, no, I don't. That's all for now, bye. All right, I think before you, uh, before you go any further here. Yeah. Uh, we are 70 minutes into the episode. I'm just going to go ahead and insert uh, insert one of these right here. That's going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Time flies when you're walking back and forth near a statue. Uh, when you come back next time, it seems like we have some we have some things. We've figured some stuff out. Some police work was done, definitely illegally. Uh, but in any case, conclusions. We, 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 found, we found some conclusions. We can finally put an end to at least one question how i bet that's gonna feel great yeah uh so come back next time for that and we'll see you then bye